Welcome to the Catamount Football Show. And we're going to open the show a little differently than what we normally do. We want to talk a little bit about Coach Steve Sparks, who passed away uh, last week and was a big part of our Catamount football family, but also touched a lot of people around North Georgia. Coach? Crazy. Uh, you know, um, this is certainly a position of influence. Uh, coaches, it's well documented from political leaders all the way to, to athletes, you know, whatever. Uh, talks about the influence of a coach. And I think Steve Sparks understood that. I think Steve Sparks represented that. And I heard a guy one time say this, and it describes Steve, I think, better than anybody else. He was intentional with his influence. He didn't wake up one day with the assumption that at some point today I can, I can make an impact. I think he woke up every day of his life with an intent <clears throat> to impact somebody's life. No doubt. He absolutely did. And uh, we just wanted to you know, pass our condolences and, and prayers and thoughts along to his family. Uh, he has some, a lot of Catamount connections. Oh, his crazy. daughter, Abby, is a teacher That's at right. Westwood. His other daughter is married to Colby Duckett, who was a Dalton uh, football player, Dalton football wrestler, player. Baseball That's player. right. And so, That's right. Uh, you know, the Catamount family uh, has, right. has, has touched them. We certainly lost somebody that meant a lot to us. Well, you know, the, the thing that I think about with Steve, other than popcorn, <laughs> which you, you may see a memorial later on about that, That's right. is the thing I think about with Steve is he served. He served uh, every person that he was around. And, and from the day, in fact, I remember the first day he showed up, uh, was with Coach Napier. We had hired Coach Napier. And if you remember his spring practice, I look out there and there's a guy walking around with a white towel in his mouth and thought Jerry T Tarkanian had grown hair. And I yep. was like, who is that? He said, oh, that's Coach Sparks. And so Coach Sparks came kind of with Coach Napier, but he certainly established himself independently. And what just what a blessing it was to work alongside him. And, and Susan, his wife, is just a, a precious member of our family. And I if there's anything that I would I would say that just kind of puts a, a, a an exclamation point on this is truly once a catamount always a catamount and certainly Steve Sparks will be one of my favorite catamounts forever. Absolutely. Let's take a quick break. When we come back. We'll recap the Sequoia game. Mike Jones with Carpet Express, and it's that time of year. Cool nights, football, and best of all, Carpet Express fall sale, and the sale starts now. Save 20% on waterproof flooring. Over 75 patterns of wood floors in stock. Save over 50% off sheet vinyl floors. Take advantage of carpet manufactured rebates exclusive to Carpet Express. The more you buy, the more you save. Professional installation available. Carpet Express fall sale, now through September 30th. I'm Kelsey with the Chick-fil-A here in Dalton, and we're partnering again this year with the Dalton Quarterback Club to provide you an awesome tailgate meal each home game starting at 530. Be sure to be here by 6 o'clock for the catwalk and get your Chick-fil-A meal with Coke products sold separately. Chick-fil-A of Dalton reminds you to eat more chicken. And go Big Red! So Friday night, Sequoia came to town with their mm -hmm. wing T offense. Uh, got a chip on their shoulder. <laughs> it was a, it was a, yeah. a very physical game. It was, and and you know, I, looking back to last year, Sequoia's game, uh, certainly I think we knew what to expect. Uh, you know, that's the great thing about this region. I mean, I, there's there's not a lot of tricks in this region. A lot of established programs, uh, what they do is what they're going to do. You know, we've talked in the past about how you know you could sh go show up Friday night and you really were preparing for the first series because from that point on, there's no telling right. what somebody would do. But this team did exactly what we thought they would do. Uh, and certainly we did too. I don't think there's any secrets about that. Uh, very physical, uh, thought overall, offensively, 
Uh, I think we'll see in the film just a, a great effort out of our offensive line. Certainly another individual great effort out of, out of uh, Jameer Gibbs. Uh, and then uh, just some gutsy performances. Obviously Landon Allen fight, playing through some, some, uh, some injury there and stuff like that. So that was it's good to see. Defensively, you know, defensively uh, the wing tee is a pick your poison. Uh, it's certainly an offense that does a lot. Uh, and on top of that, you don't see it a lot. So as a defense, I felt like Coach uh, Carpenter and, and Coach Thompson, Coach Bennett, Coach Penny, uh, and Coach Hamilton thought they did a good job of kind of picking the things that we needed to control and manage, and then those things that we probably needed to just kind of let them be, let them do. Those people couldn't hurt us as bad as maybe right. others. Thought they did a good job offensively. Why don't you touch on the, well before. They they ran the midline side. Oh man, what it, a great play! It, yeah, I, it, why don't you touch on that real quick because. That, that was a play where you see the quarterback yeah. go down the line, and yeah. all of a sudden he would dart upfield at about the guard spot or right, right. the guard and tackle. And, and, and I'm sure everybody was like my mama up there saying, why can they not stop that guy? <laughs> you know who's getting the ball. Uh, and, and the reality is it's kind of one of those three-in-one type plays. First of all, it's based off the trap. And the thing about it is the trap in and of itself, uh, we've documented as my favorite play, yeah, that's a tough play. Absolutely. You know, a guy, a guy wants to step up and hit, and then he gets whapped in the ear and, and all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of based on that premise. But then when you introduce the midline, now what you're doing is you're going to read that three. So now he starts getting smart. I've been hitting the ear 25 times in the game. I'm, I'm not going to come upfield. I'm going to close now. So now we call it squeezing. I'm going to squeeze. But when he does, now that fullback loads on him, and the, the quarterback just basically follows right up in behind him, and there's this nice little seam where there's nobody because yep. everybody took the bait. Uh, which was the fullback coming through. So like I said, overall, that to me is one of the, it's one of the toughest plays. And here's what I would say. I think, and, and it's not to explain anything, it's to, kind of, it's to say the toughest thing about the wing tee, you really can't replicate that in practice. You can replicate a, a, a spread offense, an eye offense even to some extent. You can't that. that. That's something that it's like, you know, speaking Spanish and then next day you're going to try to speak Chinese. You can't. Timing right and oh, it's just hard for it a scout hard. team offense to run that. It, and, no, and you just don't see it. It's yeah. not in college. It's not in the pros. So, uh, overall, I thought our defense did a great job. Our players did an outstanding job for seeing something in one week and then having to deal with it. Absolutely. What do you think about uh, offense side? Offensively, I, I, I thought it very limited, what, 27 snaps? Yep, 27 the game. snaps, I yeah. Mean, so, I thought they played well in those 27, those 27 snaps. snaps I mean, that's right. You know, they, yeah. they, the offensive line competed well. The receivers um, ran didn't throw hard, a lot because well, they're late walked. in the game. You kind of certainly yeah. opened up your eyes and you're, you're up 21, 28. And then certainly. And, of course, Jameer's Jameer. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, one out of every four times <laughs> he touches to the ball, he's going to score. So that's pretty Absolutely. neat. It's fun to watch. So, let's take a quick break. We'll be back with more Catamount football after these messages. Hi, my name is Charles R. Hicks Sr. I'm the owner of Transformers Transmission Complete All Repair Specialist and we are excited. It is football season. Another thing that we're excited about is our new facility opening here at 844 Sugar Road in Dalton, Georgia. Our other location at 815 East Walnut Avenue is still open to help continue your car service. So just give us a call at 706-529-2706 and from the Transformers family, God, God bless, bless and have a beautiful, beautiful day. day. With Vidlink, OptiLink's exciting new entertainment platform, you'll have the freedom to stream Vidlink content on multiple devices, even when away from home. Plus, with Vidlink, you can access the widest array of content on the market. You'll get great features like Restart, Replay, Cloud-based DVR storage, all HD programming, and so much more. Contact us today to see how you can get linked to the next big thing in video entertainment. Buy from the pros who know at Proformance Sports Academy. Our pro shop has one of the largest selections of bats, gloves, and cleats in the North Georgia area. Featuring Rawlings, Wilson, Louisville Slugger, DeMarini, Mizuno, and the largest New Balance cleat dealer in the area. We provide baseball and softball gear for travel leagues, rec leagues, middle school, and high school programs. Get your baseball and softball training, equipment, and uniforms from the former collegiate and professional players who know at Proformance Sports Academy. ProformanceSportsAcademy.com we're back with our coaches interview segment guys welcome to the show thanks for coming on thank you we've got jason poteet who is the new head coach at dalton middle school and we've got mr santiago nava who has been coaching there a few years but has taken over duties as offensive coordinator correct yes sir all right jason let's talk to you tell us about taking over the middle school program 
how that's been going, kind of how that all transpired, and what, where, you're, where you got the program headed now? Um, well, I started out, I was at Gilmer County High School last year, um, kind of got interested in this job. Um, when I heard it came open, I uh, reached out to a couple people, um, kind of got the job. Um, started talking to Coach Land about some things, talked to our athletic director, Miss Alexander, at the school, and got to talking to our coaches, and, you know, it's a great group of coaches, mm -hmm. um, hardworking kids, uh, they're very coachable, very disciplined young men, and we're just trying to continue what I know as Dalton football, which, you know, because I came up through this program. I was going to say, why don't you kind of, for folks that don't know, tell us your background. Uh, at Dalton College, then your coaching experience? Um, graduated here in 1999. I played under Coach Chapel for two years, um, Co Coach McManus for two. Um, I went to Dalton Two pretty College. good guys right there. Oh, awesome, man. Coach Chapel, I yeah. love it, man. Um, but went to Dalton State College, got my undergraduate, went to UTC, finished up, um, got my first job here uh, at Dalton Public Schools, and um, left here, went to Lafayette High School for three years. Uh, left there, went to North Murray High School for three years, went back to Lafayette uh, for two more years, went to Gilmer County for a year, and now I'm here. So at so what point did you know that you wanted to be a coach? That's a funny story. Coach Bennett actually sat me down my senior year and said, uh, what do you want to do with your life, son? I said, I'm not sure, coach. Um, he said, well, you know, this is the direction you're going to go. You're going to be a health PE teacher and you're going to coach. <laughs> and I just said, yes, sir. Said, okay. Said, yes, sir. It's worked out pretty well so far, right? Yes, sir. So how about, how about building this program? Uh, talk about the number of kids you got and, and the schedule you guys are playing. What's going on with that? We've got about 80 kids total. Um, seventh and eighth. Seventh and eighth. We've got about 45 uh, eighth graders and about 30, 35 seventh graders. Um, we're about halfway through our schedule right now. Um, seventh grade's undefeated. Uh, eighth grade's lost one. Uh, we finished one uh, at halftime the other day, got canceled. So I'm not counting that one. So we were losing 13 nothing. <laughs> I won't count that That's one. That's right. You still have the second half to go on that That's one. right. All right. Well, very good. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Santiago, let's talk to you now. So you've been, you've been around Dalton football. You came through the program as well. Talk, talk about your background a little bit. Yeah, my background goes back to when I was in middle school. Um, I was actually a manager here, and that's where I started learning about, you know, how the high school works and then playing middle school football. And then I, I would play my four years here. And then what year did you graduate? 2011. 2011, okay. And um, you know, same thing what uh, Jason said. I, I got coached by you know three different head coaches with Coach McClurg, Coach Weingarten, and Coach Landis first year. So it was good to learn like different personalities and different traits. But it was always the same expectation, Don football, mm -hmm. and that that never changed between those three guys. So I was blessed to have their leadership throughout the way. So what point did you decide you wanted to be a coach? Well, a couple of years ago, I was curious, and um, I decided to be a rec coach because I was, you know, very interested about becoming a coach. I thought, like, well, if I want to enter this profession, I need to see how it works. So why not start with little kids? And I noticed that, you know, they got excited the first time playing, but they were nervous. But, you know, just the engagement and just them just, you know, being excited just to play a sport and, you know, not having to do something else outside of school, like mm -hmm. keeping themselves busy and staying active and meeting new people, I, that's when I fell in love with it. So I finished my um, undergrad at Dawn State College, and I became a middle school teacher. And um, Coach Patrick blessed me with a chance to work at the middle school as a middle school coach. And then the next year, Coach Land brought me up to work with the high school as well. I was going to say, both you guys are working with the high school team on Friday nights. Talk about what, you, what your role is on Friday nights, Jason. Um, I'm up in the press box. I help Coach Carpenter with personnel, uh, watching what the offensive line does a little bit, uh, but mostly, mainly personnel mm -hmm. things. How about you? I'm just so working different. with coach, uh, the, with offensive staff right. on signaling plays. All right, absolutely. So you have moved into a new role, first time calling plays, right? Yes, sir. So how has that transition been? How how is that how is that process learning how to call plays? Two transition roles for me has been one. I've been receivers coach the last three years. Now I'm working with quarterbacks, so I actually embrace the challenge because I like getting outside my comfort zone and learn something new, especially with offense. I, I love offense, so. I got to see from the offense from outside in. Now working with quarterbacks, I see it from inside out. So that's pretty unique. And plus, being the play caller and you know helping design the plays gives me a sense of you know just a way to be involved and make sure putting our kids in the best situation to to actually succeed. Um, I'm a big person on working with my kids' skills rather than trying to fit something that you know that can't work. Right. So I'm real good on just embracing the challenges and learning new things as I go. And of course, like all head coaches, you, you reserve the right to uh, step in and 
change the play, right, when yes. you need to? Yes, but very seldom. I mean, he's, he's right on top of his job. Yeah. He does well. That's awesome. Well, thanks. We're lucky to have you guys working with our young folks and, and certainly glad to have you with us uh, on Fridays and, and Sunday meetings, all the fun things you get to attend. So appreciate everything you do. Thank you. Thank so you're right here, back with more Catamount football after these messages. Ford of Dalton, your hometown Ford dealership, offers our exclusive 10-year, 150,000-mile limited warranty and our $1,000 low-price guarantee. Ford of Dalton, I-75, exit 336, or FordofDalton.com. Home is a place where all are welcome. It's where the story begins. It's not a place, it's a feeling. Home is where the heart is. At Furniture of Dalton, we handpick each of our 150 brands so that you can find your perfect heart's desire. Come see what you've been missing at Carpets of Dalton and Furniture of Dalton, the destination that brings you home. Exit 328 off I-75. At Engineered Floors, we make sure better is in every detail. Technology has always been the foundation of Engineered Floors, pushing past what we believed was possible. Rather than having several buildings for each part of our manufacturing process, we put everything under one roof, from beginning to end, which means easier production, faster turnarounds, and better work environments. When it comes to the environment, we've taken extra care to leave a smaller footprint, especially as we grow. Stain resistant, pet friendly, durable, beautiful, guaranteed. We create our flooring with our customers and their daily needs in mind. We are invested in this community and the economy that has been created by the industry we love. And after all of this, we still know that we can do more. As long as our customers need us, we'll continue to fearlessly pursue better. Ford of Dalton, your hometown Ford dealership, offers our exclusive 10-year, 150,000-mile limited warranty and our $1,000 low-price guarantee. Ford of Dalton, I-75, exit 336, or FordofDalton.com. Welcome back to Catamount Football. We've got our player interview segment. Guys, welcome to the show and introduce yourselves, please. Uh, Joshua Moore, senior, number 24. Fullback, running back. Uh, Osvaldo Beltran, senior, left tackle, and 70. All right. All right, Josh, let's start with you. Talk about your role in the offense this year. You're doing quite a few different things. We see you split out wide. We see you up, up in Ozzy's hip pocket up there at the line of scrimmage. You're seeing the backfield. Talk about all the different things you're doing. Um, uh, my role is as a fullback, I, I just block, like, pay the way for the running back. And when I go to running back, I just run the ball. And sometimes they'll split me at, uh, they put me at receiver just to help out blocking all mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. So we know about your blocking. You do a great job. Talk about that, about blocking for Jameer, how, how special it is having, having number one behind you back there. Uh, it's really cool because, you know, it's something I've always done with him. we have been doing this as a little. And, um, yeah, that's really it. Yeah. Now, how about you got in the end zone Friday night? So let's talk, let's hear about that. Talk, talk about that play. Talk about, Cause you're you're a really good running back in your own in your own right. Yeah. Uh, every time I just get the ball, I just try to like get as much as yards as I can, and I just try to score every time I touch it. So Sequoia physical physical team Friday night. Talk about the game a little bit. Uh, they had, they had a few good players. They uh, they never gave up really. Uh, they were just flying around the ball. Yeah. And uh, it was pretty good competition. Yeah. They, the they they that's a good point. I mean they fought pretty much the whole game, right? Mm-hmm. So, what about how about goals for you for the rest of the season and for the team? Uh, for the rest of the season, I think we should run the region, and for me, hopefully, we'll run the ball more. <laughs> <laughs> I've talked to Coach Martinez and Coach Lane about that a little bit. Is, yeah. that, is that the case? Yeah. All right. Well, you made a pretty good you made a pretty good case for it Friday night. It was a nice run you had on down there about the what ten yard line or yeah. so. Yeah. Got it in. So good job. Thank you. All right. Thanks for coming on. All right, Ozzy Osbaldo. Let's All talk right. to you. So we were just talking before we went on. You got that name when you were a uh, freshman, I think, right? Yes, sir. And uh, Ozzy's kind of stuck with you around. The, most of the team calls you that. So, so talk about your, your, the offensive line's development. I mean, last year you guys were all together. Now, we've added Christian. He moved in in December. But that, that other, that core group, Brant came last year, uh, and the rest of the guys. 
Talk about y'all's development as a group and what you've done to improve from last year to this year. Uh, well, last year we, it was, uh, I guess, a young, somewhat young team, and we wouldn't really communicate with each other. We just try to, we would just depend on one. Mm -hmm. And then, like, if a backer would walk up, we wouldn't communicate. And this year now, when we see one walk up or we see the backer back up, do anything like that, the formation changes, we, we call it out. And that's what we do now, and yeah. it's been a lot better since. It helps. It really helps. You guys are doing a good job of communicating with each other. So you've been playing. You, this is your third year as a starter, third full year as a starter. Yes, sir. Talk about your progression just in what, in what you see from when you were a sophomore, junior to this year. Um, uh, sophomore, I was really nervous the first time going out there Friday night. And then uh, I kind of got used to it over during the season. And then junior. Uh, I was well. I put on like good amount of weight, yeah. and I I wasn't used to it, and then it kind of slowed me down. And then this year, I kind of I got used to the weight, got stronger, got a little bit faster, and felt like I could move a lot better. You're you're you've work, been working really hard in the weight room, and it, it's evident by how you how you move around the field. Talk about how that's how how that's helped you. Uh, like let's say we're running a play, I double with the with the guard on with me, and the three goes to the other side. I can put like put a foot down faster, go up to that backer, mm -hmm. and like uh, just move better all around. Absolutely, absolutely. Talk about Sequoia a little bit. Uh, they're well. I, I went mostly against the ends, but uh, they never gave up. Even though we were up by a lot, they were still giving it their all. Their their ends were physical. They were fast, faster than the ones I've uh, the, than the ones we've been going against. Yeah and they just never gave up. Yeah. Touch on the other guys real quick that, that are on the, on the line with, it, with you. Uh, that, like, uh, Brant. Uh, Brant, um, they were like, sometimes when a, when coach would call a play, I wouldn't see it, like, the light's glaring on me, and I can't see coach, you know, I ask him, and he tells me, he's like, come on, Ozzy, you need a, you need a look, <laughs> you need to pay attention, and stuff like that, but yeah. You got solid center. And Idre, Manny, and Christian. So we got a, and, and Fabio, pretty good. All seniors, right? Yes, all, all all senior linemen, seven guys. So uh, pretty uh, pretty good group. Yes, sir. All right. Thanks for coming on, guys. We appreciate everything you do for Catamount football, and we'll be watching you the rest of the season. Yes, sir. See right here. We'll be back with more in just a minute. Why should you make the switch to First Bank of Dalton? My bank gives back to our community. My bank understands our changing needs. My bank made my dream home my home. My bank has the tools I need to manage my business. My bank helps me save. My bank make decisions locally. Need more reasons? Stop by and see why First Bank of Dalton should be your bank for life. Big things are happening at Hamilton. Anna Shaw Children's Institute, People's Cancer Institute, new physician practices near you, and Hamilton Medical Center is number one for overall hospital care. Hamilton Healthcare System, health for life. Are you tired of driving to Chattanooga to have a great dinner? Look no further than Walnut Hill Farm right here in Whitfield County. We are now serving dinner on Thursday and Friday nights. Our team of Matt Barrett and Jason Joseph have put together what we believe is the finest menu in Whitfield County. With a wine selection of over 50 bottles and 50 miles of mountain range in the background, this will be your go-to for romantic dinners and dinner with friends. We look forward to seeing you out here, five o'clock on Thursday and Friday nights. We're back to finish up our player interview segment. Guys, welcome to the show. Introduce yourselves, please. Uh, Ryan LaRoy, number 58, senior, nose, nose guard. And I'm John Ross, number 36, I'm defensive end. All right, Ryan, let's start with you. So <clears throat> you are not a huge, big nose guy, nose man, right? I mean, so we run up against some pretty big offensive linemen. Talk, talk about what you do, because you do a great job of using technique. And um, how do you battle those, those extra large guys so I like you said technique I have to make sure that's as best as I can be and I have to try to perfect every game I have to kind of use my body weight and their body weight to their disadvantage and kind of use the fact that I'm lower to the ground than they are to try to maneuver mm -hmm. my way back there so it's kind of it's kind of a little challenge here and there but I'm able to handle it pretty well I know all you guys love to rush the passer so tell me what's your what's your go-to pass rush move 
What do you like to do? Uh, push and pull. So I'll push and then pull down and try to get them off balance. Explain how that works. That, that's, that's a really good technique, especially for somebody with your strength and, and body type. So you kind of push them off of you, and as they're leaning back, you pull them down real quick and try to get them off balance, and then just kind of slide on by. What do you look for? You look for the offensive lineman leaning forward, yes, sir. and you want to get him and when, Once he starts him. leaning forward, I can just pull him down. So, so Friday night, you guys <clears throat> faced a wing T offense, which we don't see a lot of anymore. Uh, talk about the challenges that presented and, and how, how you guys manage that. So basically it's more of a, they're going to try to run it down our throats, try to just pound it and pound it and pound it. So it was a, more of a challenge just to focus and worry about all the traps and pulling. And so just to focus on that and try to make sure that we don't run up field, that we don't, that we keep our, you know, defend our space and just don't let anybody push us out. So it's kind of a little more of a challenge. than. That's another thing. aspect of the wing tee. It's not where they really line up and come straight at you. They're coming from a lot of different places, a lot of different angles, right? Yes, sir. So, how, how do you, how do you, what keys are you looking at when you're when you're trying to so determine? So, one of the major keys that I'll look at is the guards, his uh, how much pressure he has on his hands. If he's looking like he's about to pull or maybe pass block, or if he has more weight on his hands, he's coming straight off. So, kind of look for that. Uh, depending on whether, kind of pick up on some things in the game, like some calls they make, some different adjustments that they are doing. So, just kind of look for those little keys here and there. And then as soon as, some, like, say my guard goes down, I know I have to squeeze and kind of look for that puller coming through. How does it help you going against our offensive line and our offense in, during the weekend practice? So our offensive line is definitely bigger than the one that we played against right. Sequoia. Um, they're also, they, we've gone against each other for a while, so it's kind of just we're... You guys know each other pretty well, don't you? know each other pretty yeah. well, so it's kind of like some of the things that I might see against another offensive line that they give away easily. It's not as easy sometimes with uh, our offensive line. Uh, definitely... Some people are harder to go against than others, but uh, it's just kind of, it kind of, they're definitely, we definitely have a great offensive line, so it kind of makes it easier when it comes to game games. Uh, uh, yeah, I think you guys do a good job of making each other better, yes, uh, both, both groups. I like, I like how y'all compete with each other. Thanks for coming on. All right, John, let's talk to you. Tell me about your role in the Catamount defense. Um, I kind of have a couple different roles I play where I'll kind of move around, play you know, linebacker, outside linebacker, get it uh, on you know, all fours is how I like to stand, and even go into a three technique, stuff like that. Where do you like to play? Of all those places you line up, where do you like to go the best? Uh, probably the best for me is whenever I get moved back to outside because it kind of adds right my rush and it, and it, you know, throws off the tackle a little bit more. It gives them something different to see, and I think it makes, you know, our defense better yeah. just because we don't have to bring in new personnel to switch our – you know, formation. I know you like to rush the passer too, so I'm going to ask you the same question. Tell me about what. Tell me about your pass rush move. If you would ask me last year, I probably would have said the same thing as Ryan, but I've tried to kind of add a couple new things where you know I'll kind of fake where I'm you know using my pressure uh, toward like I'm about to go in or mm -hmm. go out and kind of go the opposite and really use violent hands as you know the most important thing whenever. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Explain that because that's really that's that's a great weapon that you guys have is using your hands and mm -hmm. talk about how that how that assist you when you're fighting off an offensive lineman? So we're obviously a lot smaller than most um, that, you know, offensive lineman play. Mm -hmm. And for me, especially tackles, because, you know, Ozzy was just in here, you know, he's right. almost a foot taller and, you know, 100 more pounds than I weigh. But, you know, if you can use your hands, you can keep their hands off of you and you use your hands to shock them and, you know, keep their hands off of you and just punch them around, then you're going to have a lot better shot than if you're not using your hands. Tell me about your view of, of that Sequoia wing tee offense, because you were looking at it from a different perspective than Ryan. You were on, out on the edge a lot, but they mm -hmm. still do a lot of things to you guys out there too, right? Yeah, well, they they weren't too big uh, this year, but mm -hmm. you know they're always trying to use the angle and try and blow you out. So for us, you know, I play my role where I'm not going to make the tackle all the time, but I stopped the uh, you know, the puller from taking out a linebacker or something like that, and it makes our defense, you know, get the stops and get off the field like we needed to. So. Absolutely. How about goals for you, for yourself and for the team for the rest of the season? Um, well, for me, you know, short term, or for the team, short term, you know, we want to win the region, go undefeated. Absolutely. Long term, hopefully win state championship. But for me, um, you know, I want to be, you know, at least first team region this year. and. You know, I always try and, you know, me and the other deal line guys have a big back and forth going on. So as long as I got the best stats out of them, it don't really matter. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for coming on. You guys do a great job. Appreciate Thank everything you do for Catamount Football. Thank you. So right here back in just a minute. Mike Jones with Carpet Express, and it's that time of year. 
cool nights, football, and best of all, Carpet Express fall sale. And the sale starts now. Save 20% on waterproof flooring. Over 75 patterns of wood floors in stock. Save over 50% off sheet vinyl floors. Take advantage of carpet manufacturer rebates exclusive to Carpet Express. The more you buy, the more you save. Professional installation available. Carpet Express fall sale, now through September 30th. So, how you guys doing? My job starts in Portland in a month. Mm. Can we find a buyer that fast? I think we're good. Our CBX app tells us who the best potential buyers are. We can pinpoint where the hottest prospects are located, right on this map. Mm. Two cities over. It even lets us set the most accurate price. Wow, it really does all that. It really does all that. <laughs> well, help us pack. We're working on that. Oh, we had uh, DPRD rec night and we had middle school night. Well, wasn't that great? Absolutely. Love seeing those young guys out there, those future catamounts. Just an outstanding job. Love seeing uh, our coaches out there as well. Uh, and, and, uh, and being a part of our program and then certainly the band did an outstanding job and getting better and better every week and uh, just exciting man just nothing like Friday night at Catamount Stadium. Absolutely, absolutely. There comes the guys through the banner. We didn't mention when they interviewed Ozzy but he committed to Tennessee Tech that's right. this past week so that's, that's exciting. exciting for him. Absolutely and once again back to your point great right here to yep. see the kickoff now you'll see right here, uh, talk a little bit, there's a belly right there when a the quarterback rolls out like that right there, guard, play side guard pulls, tries to kick out. You'll see the same thing coming back here in just a few minutes. Right there's another trap. Defense did a great job. They certainly walked the dog, we call it, uh, in, the, in the first half, taking, or the first drive, taking it down. But sometimes you got to, you know, like I said, you got to see what a team's going to do before you can stop it. And uh, certainly they take it down. We're going to get a big stop here in a minute. Uh, and then we turn around and right here, you see the fumble right there, great strip right there. Not sure who did that, but a great job by Parker Adams recovering the fumble. They give it to us, only for us to immediately uh, basically put it back in an envelope and send it right back to them. Once yep. again, though, great energy. But a freak, it's freak though right here. I mean, yeah, just guy came up from behind. They had an extra guy in the box, like we were talking about earlier, and we couldn't account for the for the one, and, and he came out and popped the ball out. Good stop right here, run uh, uh, by Ryan LaRue, one of our captains, and John Ross. Great job. And then here they get a surge and certainly go up on a seven to nothing. More importantly, they take ten minutes, and then they kick to Jameer. That's right. And it, it, unbelievable patience. But a great right there, great job of spinning out of that. Love seeing these guys getting downfield right there. There's a great Josh block. Moore. Josh Moore. And uh, just an outstanding job right there of, of Jameer responding to that. And, you know, funny thing about it, and this is what's kind of great about this, you'll see it uh, here in just a moment, hopefully, if we see a replay on it. Just a fabulous job right here of being patient and waiting. You think, oh, you got to go fast, got to go fast. No, you got to let those blocks happen. And then he does a great job getting the strain. Of course, his balance is phenomenal. But you see Josh right there, not clipped because he had already engaged. Good job right there. You see Maurice Howard getting down the field, getting excited. And it's so funny because I've had these moments. You look over at the coach and down goes the clipboard, down goes the visor, and then it's, who you told? Yeah. The one thing we told you to not do, the one person we told you not to kick it to. Come back and run a little inside reverse or what we could do, a little inside counter. Good job of John Ross right there and Christian Lama. You'll see them, and you'll see a little bit more people up front. Go ahead. I was just talking about they do wing T promotes <laughs> backwards blocking. That's exactly and that, right. And that just, I just watched And their, backwards thinking, too. Is that I, what you're saying? Watch that right guard just <laughs> backward, backward block little Rui. Yeah, they, 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 it's really a, a different philosophy. Great job. Tyson Swope had a great job. Brock. Uh, 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 Johnson getting in right there on a great play. This little inside fold, little lead. Uh, great job, Mauricio Quintero and, and Coy Gray. Good to see Coy Gray getting in, making some big plays. Come back on offense, Landon Reeds and throws, fits the ball right in there to uh, Hunter Nolan. If there's a tougher guy on our team, I don't know. Pound I don't know for round, round. <laughs> he's the toughest guy in the region. Great throw, though, right there. Yep. Good job, good catch. So that takes us to the second quarter. We've run, I think, exactly three plays, and one of them was a fumble. So come back over. They, we punt out of there. They take the ball. We hold them. Uh, right here, you'll see another good play right there. 
Coy Gray stepping in right there. John Ross. John probably had his best game of the season, uh, which these kind of teams are probably a little bit more geared toward him. Good job, Caleb Hernandez. Really has come along as an outside linebacker for us. Had to get some reps last year. You'll see right here. John comes in on a stunt. Christian Lama working down. They flush it outside to Caleb. Caleb does a good job. And Brady Penley. We got some good reps out of him the other night. So now this is kind of what you get. You get the short punts, trying to keep it away from them. And once again, that goes back into those, I mean, those, yards, those are yards. Absolutely. In the first three games, we've really benefited from the short punts, trying for them not wanting to punt it to Jameer. Great job right there. Yep, running the buck sweep. What a move. What a move right there. And then acceleration. And then yeah. reaches out for the end zone. That's right. And technically, if you're in control of that ball, when you cross that line, it don't matter if it comes out. Once you break the plane, it's just like breaking a pane of glass. Once you break it, uh, look right there. Wow. And then one more coming right. Boop. And that kid's number 13. He's got 13 D1 offers. Yeah, he's a good player. I, you watch the film, he's, he flies around a lot of places. And then once again, Pepe Lara right there came in, had a little bad uh, uh, hold right there, and uh, he was able to kick it basically right off the ground. And then once again, another great job, J.J. Robledo putting it inside the right, – right where we want it. And, you know, we get excited about that. That's a huge component for a defense when that team has to drive the ball 75 or 80 yards every Absolutely. single time. That is huge. Right here, you just a little block back once again. Don't really know why they went away from that run in the midline, though. I mean, that was clearly their number one play and went away from it. So we stop it on downs. Here comes Buck Sweep again. You get Edre Garcia out there with a good kick-out block. And here comes Manny around the corner and Brant Bagley doing a good job. Good job. Karim out there was doing a good job of blocking that guy, and the guy comes off just at the last minute. Oh, good job right there, Brant. Yeah, Brant's turned into a really good puller. He, he, he has worked hard at it, and he understands it, and he drives a good puller as well. Yeah. And Manny does too. Wow. Good push right there by the guys in the middle. There's 13. <laughs> I think that's one of those hits out of frustration, isn't yeah, absolutely. it? Absolutely. What a great play. Great patience right there, sifting through, just waiting. Josh Moore, what a great job right there. Yeah, we asked him to do something that he doesn't do a whole, just straight on block a couple of these ends uh, with the scheme we were doing. He did a really nice job of it. Good excitement. Love to see those guys come in on the sidelines. Once again, J.J. Robledo. J.J. is going to handle a lot of our kickoffs and also our extra points and punting. Right here you see just a little waggle play, and our defense does a great job and great pursuit by Tyson. Great job of Caleb Hernandez right there turning it in. You'll see it right here. Plays off of the block, keeps working on his width, doesn't let him break the contain. A great job right there. Tyson Good job, Caleb. Coming in. That's right. Pursuing. And then right there, man, what a great play right there. We stuff it right there. Big play. Right here they try to come back with a little screen, and great job of our guys sniffing it out. Coach Bennett. Coach Penny doing an outstanding job working with those guys on screen identification. Come back. There's Brant Nidre opening the way for Jameer. You know, just once he gets kind of in that track, uh, and, and certainly that play has been a play that we hadn't run in the past. We really started running it last year, but they've kind of come into their own this year. Really have. <clears throat> We've been able to adapt and, and do some things with it to fix some of the problems we would have last year. Uh, we, we we wouldn't get the right when we wouldn't get the right front. So 32 and a half seconds, getting ready to go to halftime. What Great a push. job! Yeah, what a push right there. I mean, you just saw a bull. Uh, Christian Lama is playing probably his best football. I thought he played good and sound last year, but clearly this year, and he and Ryan Larui right there made a tremendous push in the middle. So exciting right there. Love to see that juice. Love to see that energy. Great job by Ryan right there, he and Christian on that play. Home is a place where all are welcome. It's where the story begins. It's not a place, it's a feeling. Home is where the heart is. At Furniture of Dalton, we handpick each of our 150 brands so that you can find your perfect heart's desire. Come see what you've been missing at Carpets of Dalton and Furniture of Dalton, the destination that brings you home. Exit 328 off I-75. 
Hi, I'm Dr. Reginald Sherrill. Are you tired of sweaty underarms and dealing with deodorant stains on your clothes? We're performing a procedure called Mirror Dry. It's safe, non-invasive, sweat and odor free, deodorant free. It is clinically proven and FDA approved. I've had the procedure and it really works. The procedure takes about one hour, it's local anesthesia and works immediately. Call our office, Dalton Plastic Surgery, 706 226 Alright, so you really went in and challenged them in the second half uh, at halftime to come out with the same intensity, right? That's right, absolutely. And then we do a finesse pass. So. Yeah. <laughs> No, it was a really good job. I missed mean, a call right here. The guys up top said, hey, those guys are getting primed. It's about time to do that. So we kind of felt like in that first quarter, that'd be, I mean, that first part of the third quarter, we could do that. You see right here, they bite on the fake. And just a great job right there of him laying it up. Good route by Hunter Nolan. Probably like back to the point. I mean, just an unbelievable tough kid playing with a little bit of a growing strain. Bruise on his thigh. Would not let us bring him out. I mean, he stayed in and fought the whole time. So a great job right there. This is just, I'm faster than you. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, that's, that's the nature they, of that they, play. They I actually mean, played that one fairly well. We didn't have the normal cut up that you see, and Jameer just has to bounce it, and then he just outruns these guys to the corner. Not going to get him. No, you're not going to get him. Good snap by Harrison Jones. Good hold by Parker Adams. A good kick by J.J. Robledo. A little bit of a worm burner right here, and of course he mishandles it and then forgets it. Has mm -hmm. to go back for it. Good job, good pursuit right there. A.J. Hernandez, Tayton Benton, and Bryson Benton coming down. Great job. Good job right there by Brock Johnson getting outside and containing. And uh, you'll see this right here. You'll see uh, events of Vignette come from the backside. Good job right there. Good pursuit, Tyson Swope, and then events and coming up and kind of cleaning it up. Great job by Tyson Swope, though, right there. Good energy. Great job. That gets me excited. I mm -hmm. like to see those plays. Then right here, key down right here. Great job holding him. You'll see him right here. Just grab a hold of it. Great play. Great, great job right there. Great job by our defense. You'll see it right here. They just hold the line. Tyson Swope, Evans and Vignette, Lane Cox coming in, uh, Malachi Gregory. Well, what's your man John Ward say? And a host of uh, uh, Catamounts? Host of Dalton Catamounts. That's right. So just a great job right there. Great Coach job Thompson. right there. You know, a little coaching. That's right. Similar Similarities in the hair. <laughs> That's you right. Think so? <laughs> good job. That's what I love about being here at Dalton. You go get coached up. Even when you make a good play, there's something you can coach up. So a great job right there. Come back. Ashton Blackwell's in the game. And he does a smart thing and gives it to one. Yeah, I'm about saying so is Jameer. He's still <laughs> yeah. Good shot of Dr. Scott there, our superintendent. Appreciate his support and being on the sidelines. Great block right there once again by, by Josh. I thought Josh had a great, just had a great game the other yes, night. Yes, he did. He played very well. Good job, Journey Boston, getting down the field right there for blocking. Good job. Come back. Good kick by Idre. Good job of Brandt getting downfield, finding the safety. <laughs> Great job right there. Good kick. Idre, good yep. job. Brandt, good job. And, of course, Journey. Whoop. It's that Coach Martinez move. Absolutely. Come back. Good push. There's Josh. Oh, I love that. Yep. Hey, that's one of my good I love seeing Josh, Josh run the ball. That is a great job by Josh. And we have a little, we have a little extra cricket activity. Right. Now 36 is a little angry. And then we have road rage. Boom. <laughs> Takes it out on his helmet. Uh, now he's saying, hey, I hey. don't know if you saw that. He threw his helmet down. So. That's, that's serious, too. I mean, he's out for, what, the oh. next two games? Yep. That's exactly so right. So you gotta, you've got to maintain your composure. You can't, uh, can't lose your mind and, and get thrown out of a game. You can't. And you've got to give Brand a lot of credit for not responding. Oh, and the, the guy the punched, punched him, three, him times. three times. I mean, it wasn't just one time. Great yeah. job, Mauricio Quintero. Good job, John Ross, setting a contain on the corner. And then Mauricio coming off the backside off a little stunt there. Great job. Great job. Good pursuit. You know, that's one of the things we talked to our guys about, being relentless with their pursuit. 
They moved the ball down a little bit. And, of course, right here, a big play by our defense. Tyson Swope in there, Christian Lama in there. Got a running clock in the fourth quarter. Great coverage right here. It had Parker Adams and Brady Penley back there. They did move the ball down a little bit. And right here you just see, just, it's a great play. I mean, they just basically outflanked us and got back up underneath it. Come back, get Josh a few more carries. Fabio Garcia right there on a great uh, mm -hmm. kind of come in. <laughs> Once again, Coy Gray making a good play right there. Good pursuit right there. Good pressure. Good job by, by Malachi. Love to see that scoreboard more on our side than on the other side. Absolutely. Why should you make the switch to First Bank of Dalton? My bank gives back to our community. My bank understands our changing needs. My bank made my dream home my home. My bank has the tools I need to manage my business. My bank helps me save. My bank make decisions locally. Need more reasons? Stop by and see why First Bank of Dalton should be your bank for life. Big things are happening at Hamilton. Anna Shaw Children's Institute, People's Cancer Institute, new physician practices near you, and Hamilton Medical Center is number one for overall hospital care. Hamilton Healthcare System, health for life. Are you tired of driving to Chattanooga to have a great dinner? Look no further than Walnut Hill Farm right here in Whitfield County. We are now serving dinner on Thursday and Friday nights. Our team of Matt Barrett and Jason Joseph have put together what we believe is the finest menu in Whitfield County. With a wine selection of over 50 bottles and 50 miles of mountain range in the background, this will be your go-to for romantic dinners and dinner with friends. We look forward to seeing you out here, five o'clock on Thursday and Friday nights. All right, Coach, let's talk a little bit about the Creek View Grizzlies. We're yeah. headed down yeah. there That's right. uh, this coming Friday, so it's going to be uh, always a, a tough game with those guys. It is. Creek View uh, is a team that uh, certainly last year came into their own. They had been coached by Terry Crowder, a good friend of mine, won a state championship at, at Etowah, who had kind of built the program. He left, uh, went to, uh, uh, I think it's Denmark High School uh, over in Forsyth. Uh, a young man came in, Adam Carter, and coached him last year. Uh, and coached them to a region championship, obviously, and then, mm -hmm. and then up into the finals. Wound up getting the Grayson job after one year and took a lot of his staff. Um, so they have a new coaching staff. That's the number one thing. But the, the players didn't change. Uh, it's the same type of offense and defense as we saw last year. From an offensive standpoint, they're going to be spread. Uh, they're going to try to move the ball down the field at a fast pace. I will say this. I think they have one of the best probably quarterbacks in the state. It's very electric, makes a lot of big plays. We went down to scout them out at out Altoona and uh, just does a phenomenal job running the offense and whomever's calling the plays does a great job, I think, of keeping the game within what he's able and capable of doing. They've got an off offensive tackle committed to Clemson. Offensive tackle's committed to Clemson, that's right. He's a very, very big, very physical specimen. And uh, so uh, we'll, uh, we'll have to look at what kind of uh, Scooby treats we, we take <laughs> for him uh, in that game because he is, he is a great player. And they have those. They have those great players. From a defensive standpoint, if you want to talk about that a little bit. Uh, there'll be a multiple front. I mean, we've seen them last year. They ran 3-3 three, three against us. We, mm -hmm. We've seen them in 3-4. We've seen them in a four-man front. As much as we run the ball, there's going to be people in the box. I don't know. <laughs> However they get there, yeah. there there's going to be yeah. seven of them in the, in the, in yeah. the box trying to prevent us from, you know, getting, giving the ball yeah. to Jameer. So we'll figure it out as we go through the week yeah. and, and be able to deal with them. Hopefully why why don't Friday you night. talk a little bit about that? Because I know I, I've been in some conversations about that. You, you can plan all week, but you kind of know what the total number will be in right. the box. But that configuration looks a little different. Talk gotta about know, the challenges. Where to find them. Yeah, talk about that challenges for the offensive well, line. Well, it, it really changes the schemes, particularly whether it's a three-man or a four-man front. There's things that we we do against both of those, uh, and it, so it, the offensive linemen have to be able to recognize a front. And, and Ozzy was talking earlier about them communicating. That's, That's right. one of the things they really have done a pretty good job of this year is they identify and the they front. They didn't do that last year. That's an important point. Last, last year, and they would mess up assignments. That's and right. now they identify the front. So it gets them all on the same page That's right. uh, about what, what, how the combos are working or how their double teams are working, whatever they're doing. Uh, and it's, it's made a big difference for them. And it's something that uh, Cole and I try to 
communicate to them every day. Sure. You know, I look. Sure. And, and we and you structured in practice where we'll have a uh, three three team period, then we'll have a three four period, and then we'll have a four man front period. That's right. And we've got to do that. That's to, right. To, to get see them what ready. we're going to yeah. do. And it and it affects where uh, the running backs go with the ball Absolutely. too. Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. <clears throat> when it's a three man front. Power hits in a different place than when it's a four that's man right. front, that's and exactly so right. he's got. This changes that back's angle. That's right. Well, he's got it. Right. Jameer's got to see that and feel that mm -hmm. when he's running in practice too. So special teams, they're going to be very solid. Uh, I think that's the one thing our region. Uh, I would say more than anything, I think we have one of the most solid regions, and I think it's one of the why we're the best region in the state right now. Our kicking that you're going to see week in and week out from every school, I mean from Cobb County, Cherokee to here, is very, very solid. So another solid, good kicker, kick it in the end zone. We've gotten a nice surprise with our kicker, right? Boy, I mean, we have. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Booming yeah. it in the end zone. Yeah, J.J. Robledo and, uh, and, and Pepe Lara uh, have been just two outstanding uh, young men for us, along with Philly Quintero. Uh, and, of course, Estebana, Bar XLK, XLK, that's right, doing an outstanding job. But, yeah, it's been great to have those guys step in. Uh, Ivan kind of uh, had our, his, uh, uh, his apprentice, uh, and uh, the young man got an opportunity to play some uh, professional soccer in the, or, or club soccer in the fall and was, able, was having to, to back out. These young guys stepped up and have done an outstanding job. And so it's going to be fun to see their development. And they're young, and that's the great thing about it. Sophomores and juniors, they're going to be with us for a couple of years. Just got to get them to pay attention on the sidelines. Got to get them to pay attention on the sidelines. That's right. No more siestas. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back in just a minute. Hi, my name is Charles R. Hicks Sr. I'm the owner of Transformers Transmission Complete All Repair Specialist and we are excited. It is football season. Another thing that we're excited about is our new facility opening here at 844 Sugar Road in Dalton, Georgia. Our other location at 815 East Walnut Avenue is still open to help continue your car service. So just give us a call at 706-529-2706 and from the Transformers family, God, God bless, bless and have a beautiful, beautiful day. day. With VidLink, OptiLink's exciting new entertainment platform, you will have the freedom to stream VidLink content on multiple devices, even when away from home. Plus, with VidLink, you can access the widest array of content on the market. You'll get great features like Restart, Replay, Cloud-based DVR storage, all HD programming, and so much more. Contact us today to see how you can get linked to the next big thing in video entertainment. Train like a pro at Performance Sports Academy. Get one-on-one -on -one training from former professional and collegiate players, featuring indoor baseball and softball training facilities, ground ball area, three pitching mounds, and four batting cages. Performance Sports Academy is also available for team rentals. Call 706-537-3169 today and train like a pro at Performance Sports Academy. All right, Coach, we've come to the end of another show. Um, but let's talk about, first off, we're going down to Creekview. That's we, right. We want to have more people at the game than, they, than they'll have. That's right. Uh, that's, that's always our objective for our fans. We like to have. No, actually, we travel so well. We really that's do. actually one of the, the things about most of our region. They enjoy hosting us because they know our fans travel so well. Now, regrettably, they don't reciprocate a lot. Like this week, Sequoia not bringing their band. and and not, you know, bring a very few. But as far as Creekview, we need a great support. It's going to be alumni night there for them. So they'll have a crowd packed in there. So I want to invite everybody to, to, to not just come bring a friend. Uh, there's a, a, we don't want to give a free endorsement, but a great barbecue joint uh, on the way down That's there, right. obviously. If you want to get out of town and try a little something different, go there. But uh, easy drive down, straight in the stadium and back out. Why don't you talk a little bit um about the travel and what the quarterback clubs to make does oh, wow. that yeah. makes our makes our yeah. travel for our kids a lot a lot more yeah it, it's it's really our quarterback club and when we talk at the end of the show every week we always mention the quarterback club I, you know people need to understand we are not there's no obligation to do that there is such a genuine appreciation for what they do in so many facets but one of those facets is when we go on the road because we're traveling an hour hour and ten minutes we take charter buses. Uh, we, we go down in style and the air condition and, and uh, it's great internet access. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's just phenomenal and we use a, a, a 
generally the same line over and over. So we, we get to see a few of those drivers, and we get them some Dalton gear and stuff, and, and they really get into it. But, but it's really great. So we, we take the – we'll generally have a, a pregame meal gets bumped from – normally where we have it at 345, it bumps up to about 230. Uh, so we can try to get out before the crowd kind of gets to school. So we'll leave about 315 and get down there about right at 5 o'clock, 5.15, which gives us time to get dressed. We travel in our Blazers, which is a great sight to see our guys walk out on that field. Uh, I mean, I get compliments. Literally, I mean, the teams that hate us the most, when we get out of the buses, they're still complimenting. Coach, you guys look great, uh, classy program, all that. And then probably the big thing, which certainly is my son Cross's favorite portion, is when the game's over with, uh, generally the quarterback club has a, a, a Kentucky Fried Chicken for us, and that is the – the highlight of, of probably the day for a lot of our kids because it's a great experience. We sit and have a little picnic there with ourselves and talk about the game and stuff before we get back on the bus. No um, greater moment, though, when, when, when Cross got the box of <laughs> ketchup and mustard. <laughs> the, the, the disappointment <laughs> far exceeded the loss to Kale yes. in the region championship. Here's a, a box of condiments and forks and spoons. Sporks. Uh, he got sporks. Sporks. Yeah, he gets the box of sporks. So. Yeah, that, that we, we, we're still in therapy over that, but, but, but he's coming out on the other end. Thanks Absolutely. for bringing that up. Absolutely. Uh, real quick, um, sub-varsity stuff going on. We've wow, got yeah. a freshman game. Yeah. Uh, no JV, but JV's still got three or four games left. Yep, yep, Got yep. middle schools, got about halfway through their schedule. Yeah. We had Coach Poteet and, and yeah. Santiago on, and mm -hmm. those guys are doing a great job. Yeah, listen, I, I can't really just – I'm so proud of our, of our sub-varsity and our middle school programs. Uh, I'd be remiss to not give a shout out. Uh, Miss Laurie Johnson, Dr. Laurie Johnson, uh, our new middle school principal, is outstanding, fabulous. I mean, her school spirit uh, is second to none, and it's so exciting when I drop my daughter off over there on game day, and she's with her jersey on and got her hat on, and I mean, man, it's just it's great. She she's bringing that Dalton pride back at our middle school, and certainly uh, Coach Poteet and and Coach Nava to have former Catamounts mm -hmm. running your program, which kind of helps you with that connection piece Absolutely. bringing those guys to let those guys know hey you're not you're not we're not just babysitting down here we're getting you ready for the next system running similar offense similar defense and certainly uh, you know coach Patrick which we'll be talking yep. to later on about our freshman program and yourself and Jamie Penny with our JV program you guys do an outstanding job and you know it's about development uh, we want to win uh, but you know when you when you're not playing in a region where you can pick up some sub varsity right. games and a lot of people locally won't play you. You got to do a little travel, and I think you guys do an outstanding job taking those guys on the road. Going and beating freshmen has to play a lot of JV teams. Right. We generally don't tell them that until the game's over <laughs> with, right? Uh, but JV certainly, you know, it's just a great opportunity to get these guys developed because ultimately the goal is to get them on the field. All right. We'll close up like we always do. So we'll be back next week, same cat time, same cat channel. Go be red. <laughs>